Fox Business, U.S. birth rate at 32-year low. Fewer babies born in America last year than at any time since Ronald Reagan. That is what's not. The birth rate is way, way down. It is. In 2018, 3.79 million births. That's down 2% from 2017, down four years in a row, 10 of the last 11. The reasons being given, including teenagers and unmarried women having fewer babies, lower Hispanic fertility rates, and the rise in women obtaining college degrees. What does this all mean? Well, the... The, the rise of women obtaining college yeah. degrees. <laughs> Disturbing trend is that the fertility rate falling below the replacement no. level. In other words, the workforce becomes too small to support the growing retiree segment. It's a very troubling trend. As you've said before, we've seen it in Japan, Italy, and elsewhere. Uh, and it's not a good trend. I don't think we're there yet. But yeah. it's funny. <laughs> I don't think we're there yet as far as birth rates being an issue. But well, it's possible. I mean, we were t just talking about how people are having less sex. Mm -hmm. So. And this is what it leads to. Yeah, less sex. Less sex. You know, I think they need to look at Instagram and social media. It's all abortions. <laughs> well. Well, you know, people do have better access to birth control. So Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, good point. So better that does access help. to more education. Mm -hmm. Interesting. They didn't yeah. talk about that on Fox. Oh, of course not. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but, hey, we can talk about it here. We can talk about anything. Yeah, we don't but... have advertisers. You got to help support us because we, to, in order to do this every week, and we'd like to do it more if we it just get more support. Yeah. We're working on doing it more. So, healthytalkshow.com slash support. Or if you have Amazon Prime, you can always link it to your Twitch account, get a Twitch Prime, and yeah. subscribe to us for free. Healthytalkshow.com slash support. Go to that bottom link that says Twitch Prime or whatever it says. Click on that. It'll tell you how to do it. Email me, ask at healthytalkshow.com. I'll help you. Call me. We'll, we'll figure it out together. It's a little difficult. Talking about abortion. And controversial topics. Yes. When does life begin? It might depend on your faith. P-R-I, the world. Ran an interesting piece that I really enjoyed. Sister Agatha Munyani is a Catholic nun and a missionary from Zimbabwe. I met her at the annual Rally for Life in Washington, D.C. last year. She told me the issue of abortion is a controversial one in Africa, too. In my country in Zimbabwe, it's illegal to abort. You are actually sent to prison for doing that. It's illegal. It's a crime. You are not allowed. And do you think this is a good idea? It's good. It's good because... It's good. Yeah. You know, we have no right to terminate life at any stage. At any stage. For many devout Christians, life begins at conception, and abortion is wrong. Interesting. Not so cut and dry around yeah. the world. So when does life begin? When does life begin? What about for Jewish? The question of when life begins goes all the way back to the Talmud, the original source in Jewish religious law. It describes the first stage of human life as conception, when the soul comes into the world. But the fetus at this point is referred to as mere matter, not fully human yet. Orthodox Rabbi Lila Kajdan says that all changes when the baby is born. There's an idea that the act of birth itself changes the status of the fetus from this non-person, this watery matter, to a person, to a nefesh, to a person with a soul. Kajdan says some of these issues are still being debated by Jewish leaders and that Jewish law doesn't fit neatly into either the anti-abortion or pro-abortion rights camps. Very that's, interesting. That's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Which, what are we supposed to believe? <laughs> really interesting. Islam? This is Celine Ibrahim. She's a Muslim chaplain at Tufts University. But the question of when life begins from an Islamic perspective is easier to answer. Scholars have the opinion that life does begin at conception, but they're considering not just the protection of an unborn life. Muslim scholars see childbearing as a blessing, but having kids is not an obligation. Contraception is permissible. There's some wow. disagreement on abortion, with some scholars being more strictly opposed to it. But many Muslim leaders would say there are legitimate reasons to decide to terminate a pregnancy up until 120 days after conception. 
very <laughs> it's so funny how the religions all have different rules yeah and that's yeah. the main argument against abortions in the united states it always goes back to religion but one more yeah. one more hindu very short Hindus believe that the fetus contains a reborn soul at a very early stage, and the scriptures prohibit abortion, but the procedure is still legal in India. Buddhists from different schools of thought also believe that life begins at conception, but there's disagreement in Buddhism about abortion. Some say it's murder. Others, including the Dalai Lama, emphasize that this is a very personal decision with unique circumstances. I like yeah. that. A very personal decision with unique circumstances. I mean, it just goes back to show that, you know, if these major religions can't even come to a consensus, yeah. how can we just have one law that... He's going to make everybody happy. Yeah. You know, that's the issue. And I, that's the problem with politics is all these abortion things just help polarize, but... Mm -hmm. It's very personal. If you don't want an abortion, don't get an abortion. Yeah. If you do, <laughs> if you want one, you should be allowed to go get one. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, it's a decision you should be allowed to make. Well, what doesn't make sense is a lot of the research shows that people will still get abortions. They'll just get unsafe abortions. Yes. That's <laughs> and yes, yeah. Unsa yeah, unsafe methods, uncontrolled poisons. I've heard of herbal remedies for yeah. that too, herbal abortions that people have done. I mean, there's coat hangers yeah. or where women will try to throw themselves like against the stairs or against counters. To It's just not good. Yep. But yeah, a uh, question in the chat is abstinence only education still a thing in most states? Uh, I believe it varies on the state. But yeah, we have yeah. To, we'll definitely look at that. We probably have to look into. I know there's been updates. Texas probably still. Yeah. <laughs> California hasn't been that way in a very long time. Yeah, and different religions are also contradictory in contraception. Mm -hmm. uh, like Catholics, I don't think, are supposed to use contraception, but that stance may be changing in recent years. So there's just a lot of confusion. But, confusion, yeah. You know, again, personal issue. So. Yep, let people decide. And let's still respect one another because there are a lot, a lot of confounding factors. Exactly. KMOV, St. Louis. Parents left grieving as suicide rates among children steadily rise. Statistics nationwide, the number of children and teenagers going to the hospital for suicide attempts has more than doubled in the last 10 years. And that information, according to the Centers for Disease Control and the St. Louis area, is no exception to this. So much so that St. Louis Children's Hospital is making big changes to put a stop to that tragedy. Moving on or carrying Tim on. Tim Quayle, the emergency director for St. Louis Children's Hospital, says the number of kids and teens coming into the ER for suicidal thoughts and attempts has gone up 10% every year for the last five years. We see very young children, surprisingly, sometimes as young as five or six years of age who say that they want to harm themselves. Director of Behavioral Health Mary Craddock says these rising rates do show one good trend. Someone has noticed. Someone has brought them to our care because they've noticed. So that's the good side. And when these kids come into the ER, there isn't a dedicated space for them to be treated. St. Louis Children's Hospital has plans to be part of the solution. By August, they will have a brand new inpatient psychiatric ward that will have 14 dedicated beds. Damn. That's crazy. Just on that report. That's crazy. Wow. Jeez. Anything on that study or any? Yeah. yeah. Well, the JAMA article is a little confusing, mm -hmm. actually, just because of how they reported it. Uh, so they said that there was an increase yep. of 31% uh, for male individuals and female suicide rates doubled. But then the way they compared them was kind of strange because they compared them uh, to each other, so mm -hmm. you didn't get absolute numbers. But the basic takeaway was that not only are females increasing compared to men, so essentially the ratio is going down. But the women are turning to what they call these more violent methods. So, you know, men usually pick the more violent methods of hanging or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, guns, anything that works, essentially, because yeah. usually more violent equals more successful, mm -hmm. while women have gone for poisoning in general. Yeah, and that but, can usually be flushed out and yeah, if caught in time. Right. But the problem is now they're 
turning to the violent methods, so now they're becoming more successful, which is also dangerous. So now, instead of you know women kind of having this warning suicide mm-hmm. first, and then maybe they get help, mm-hmm. they you know are successful, which is not good. No. But <laughs> what I thought was kind of an oversight on that is they didn't address well. What about the fact that men are successful? That's not a good thing either. Yeah, because because they're more focusing on the women's perspective. That oh, this is bad. Yeah, the hospital stay women. is not going to save the men if the men are successful in the suicide attempt. Right, and that's again the problem yeah. where we're not helping our men enough because well, we're not helping people enough if well, they're ending up in true. the hospital for suicide attempts. No, but men that's are like typically the last, that's the last the resort. Life. Yeah, yeah, that's the last resort. Yeah. But they they didn't really address why this was happening. You know, everyone kind of suspects social media, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. again, it's hard to establish causation. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it is Mental Health Awareness Month. So love and light, love one another. Email us, askguiltytalkshow.com. Help spread positivity. Yep, and love hugs and love for everybody. Yeah, you can always just send us a hug. Yeah. Ask a healthy talk show dot com. Send us a hug. Tweet us a hug. A tweet us a hug. <laughs> uh, healthy talk show. Drop the W. Thank you so much for watching. For more healthy talk show, please consider subscribing to our podcast over at healthytalkshow dot com slash subscribe. It's free. Twitter and Instagram at healthy talk show. Drop the W. We record the podcast live Mondays at eight p.m. Pacific Standard Time over at healthytalkshow dot com slash live. Love and light.